it's kind of been life for me. I started when I was young. So my mum's a piano teacher, would teach piano in the house. I would go with her. She was a single parent as well. So it would be me traveling with her when she would go to certain places in South London. So I kind of got to know jazz grade three in the nineties. I know them pieces, they're just locked in my head. I think probably for those reasons, that's probably one of my strongest traits is my ear. Um, I just feel like I can hear where the parts are going to go. My aunt is also a musician and my uncle on my mum's side is also a musician. And my granddad is also like, or was a massive lover of music. I think that's probably why he got them into doing piano lessons. When I started off that way, I got to drums. From that, I went to a place called CYM, which is, stands for Centre for Young Musicians. And I kind of had a, like, a wide experience of doing contemporary music in a classically played kind of format. So I was playing tuned percussion. I was doing like glockenspiel and xylophones and marimbas. And I loved that. I played the timpani and stuff as well when I was there. And it was great. It was a great opportunity to have. I wasn't into making decisions for my life when I was 16. So I saw they were doing open days for the fire brigade. You can go and have a look. And I think from then, yeah, I like the idea of it, helping the community out. Long story short on that, and I got in straight away. It's demanding in a lot of ways, you know? So it kind of took, my, took up most of my time and music being something that I want to take this seriously. I'm going to be a session drummer. I'm going to, I'm going to do all that. That kind of got put to the side and it became more of a hobby for a little while. During that same time, as a young man, I got married. I had my first kid when I was 20 as well. Um, yeah, and I just was really plugged into not just the fire brigade and that side of things. It was like, I'm a dad, I'm a husband. I fully loved what I was doing as well while I was there, but there just wasn't any time. I said, look, once the kids get to about the age of five, I'm going to give it another go. What was your like aim at that point? Was it to write songs or? It was just to kind of... Because you were mainly make, drumming, right? Make beats. Well, I was making, I was doing drumming before, but I was also, from the time that I was doing songwriting at church a little bit, I was yeah. like, I think I want to give that a bit more of a go. So kind of a, a chance to kind of go into that and explore yeah. what actual production could be like and what the music could be like. And then right around the time when I started looking into that, I heard ETS to you. So yeah, thank you for that. I guess like it kind of woke me up and made me go like, you can make music in a cultivated way and it can pop and there is, there's a market for it. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to do my own version of that. Don't keep it to yourself no more. Because I know you loved the synths. Yeah. What point did that kind of come in? Like once I clocked, to me, what good music was, then yeah, there was a lot of like Prince, there was a lot of Phil yeah. Collins, there was a lot of Peter Gabriel. Pulling together the things that I could draw as uh, inspirations, thinking, how do I want to put this together? How do I make my own kind of blend in a cultivated way? What I thought was really good about what I heard from what you and Jay had been working on was that it was still really fresh. It was still really modern. And you could hear these kind of, what was inspiring you, but it, it wasn't like it was from days. It felt good when I was making music and it, it reminded me that actually it's something that I, I, I need to take seriously. I need to do this again and not, not do it as just a hobby, but do it something um, in a significant way. So yeah, I went for it and I had been following what Jane and Newt were doing because I was a big fan of BTS to you and, and Jasmine. And it was just, all of this stuff was a, a moment for me where I was like, bro, like, so it, yeah, it kind of just made me go, all right, I'm, I'm gonna give that a go in my own style, in my own way. Um, I saw that there was a, hey, come hit us up thing on the Paul Institute when it got made. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna come hit you up. I think I'd actually heard that you had a tune on SoundCloud, didn't you? Yeah, well, that's the thing that I shared. But yeah, I remember you told me. Yeah, I actually heard that before you contacted yeah. us. So Which is interesting. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, you yeah, told yeah. me that. Jay told me that, and I remember being like, 
No, you didn't. I don't believe you. <laughs> I feel like at that time, especially, mm-hmm. all the demos we were getting and stuff, there was this kind of overall kind of seriousness going throughout. Yeah, like, like over cool, you know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. that tune. Yeah, I came out with that bouncy hair and corny. You just had corny a, yeah, like a, like a, yeah. he was just like <laughs> doing a stupid face and stuff on the, in the picture. Yeah. Um, but the songwriting was like great. It was like classic songwriting. So yeah, so once we started communicate, communicating, there was a little bit more shared than I hadn't shared publicly. And yeah, it was like, we like this. I was like, all right, cool, let's go. And I feel like back then things moved well fast. It's like, it felt like it. I will we'll look back week, now. Next week, let's make this tune. And then you, I thought you made evil in like three days or something. It's an interesting one. I made it on the fire station. So I t- took a laptop, took a guitar, took a microphone, had that in a separate locker that no one hopped me out for too much and um, got to work. So yeah, I wrote Evil on the fire station, sent the demo to you, and then we, we kind of just vibed together. You were doing that yeah. shift, weren't you, as well? Yeah, and the well, same with Hypothalamus as well. I'd had a shout in the early evening that lasted until like 11, and I had everything still set up from earlier on before I'd had the shout or probably the incident. Yeah, so I was like, all right, let's get back to it. So I went back to it and carried on writing until like, I don't know, three, three in the morning. Sent it to you straight away at three in the morning. And, and that was it. That like, kind of from there, we, let's work on this one. Sean would always come with a song or like 70% of a song and then yeah usually it's, it's happened quite a few times that we've written that last 20% or whatever like whether it's a bridge or just like some other section and or just put together the arrangement final arrangement together. Just being able to vibe in the studio, it just makes things really fast. Having you going, hey, like, I think you got it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, cool. Yeah. I got it. I don't need to carry, like. If you have a similar background of influences or mm-hmm. if you just understand the type of music, that makes it so much quicker because you just know what the track needs. Basically, it just felt like jamming. And that's yeah. something I feel like I missed from doing what I thought was going to be session work, my whole like teenage dream of what I was going to do. I think I've learned quite a lot actually as well about the process. Yeah, from you, man, from you, big help. I think you always do learn a lot every, in any every session. Version. Yeah, yeah, like seeing your process and allowing me to be a part of that, although I didn't come into it with that kind of background. It's, it's been really quite, I've learned a lot. You keep me on my toes as well, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, when we did um, Have You Decided? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, just the musical choices. The, like, yeah. key change every bar. <laughs> shit. And I was trying to play the bass, and that shit was like. I mean, it's fun. Crazy. It was a lot of fun. But That's what very I mean. fun, yeah. yeah. Everything that I've recorded in those live sessions is is going to be my voice, even if it's raw, even if it's like brutally honest. Sometimes it's it's me. It's actually what I would sound like and how it could go. So much time is that quite important to you? Do you think as an artist? Yeah, like yeah, the like big part way. of being an artist and somewhere. Like I'm fully Singer. looking forward to stepping into that more. Like, I can really envision it. People saying, like, Lalo, it was cool, man. I was like, I've made it. And there's like, you've just been like, in the lab doing your thing. Yeah. And there's like, doing stuff online. A and bag then of people. And there are real people in front yeah. of you, like, love that. Singing your song back to you. Yeah. I loved that moment. I loved it. <laughs> I want to do it again. Like, there's going to be many rough and tours. Yeah. So I was like, fully. I feel like it needs to happen. Hopefully, I, I don't know. We don't know how things will go, right? But 
I hope, I hope that I've written some stuff that people can really sink their teeth into and get to know the songs and enjoy it, have people sing along. Mm -hmm.